Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I have an important update for you on NTT data and R3. NTT data is a Japanese multinational IT system solution provider, the sixth largest IT service company in the world, valued at over 11 billion. They come from actually Nippon Telegraph and Telephone that was founded 42 years ago. And I think anybody living in Tokyo will be able to show you where the NTT Data Docomo Tower is. This is the skyline of Shinjuku. And it's a rare photograph. You can see the Tokyo Tower and the NTT Data Tower all in the same photograph. It's quite beautiful. It lights up the skyline every night and these colors actually change out. All right, so NTT Data, they are serious about blockchain. They are in 22 different verticals from trade finance to settlement. And when we really look at how they got involved with blockchain, we go back to 2017 when they joined the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which at this point, they were really getting very deep into lots of blockchain technologies, but especially Hyperledger. And they seem to really focus on the smart contracts as well. And so you can see that at that same time, the NTT Data, Ripple, and Everest, a medium-sized consulting company in Spain, decided to commit full-time engineering resources to ensure the success of Hyperledger Quilt Project. This is when Stefan Thomas was the CTO, and the one person from each team then created uh a way to actually integrate with hyperledger and you can see that in this announcement in 2018 ripple also participated by joining these organizations and it's not uncommon to see this because the vision of ripple has always been to be interoperable and to be able to work with any payment system, whether it's on the XRP Ledger or Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Mojaloop, you know, what have you. So you can see here that after teaming up, teaming up with NTT Data last year, Ripple and the Japanese system integration company submitted the Hyper Ledger Quilt. And it was a Java-based Interledger Protocol ILP to Hyperledger. And through the partnership with Hyperledger, Ripple CTO Stefan Thomas says that developers will be able to access the Interledger Protocol in Java for enterprise use. Okay, Everest. Well, at this time, this is when this famous um, PDF appeared. So this is back in 2017, and you can see that the consulting company that is owned by NTT Data had uh, Ripple all over this PDF, and I think a lot of people got excited. When you take a look at the company Everest, they are in a lot of sectors. They are in 15 total, tourism, health, manufacturing, and many others. When you poke around their newsroom, you can see that they are working on a lot of different projects like gender gap in technology, cloud computing, AI, robotics. But in banking, their focus seems to be right now AI driven. And they have a recent uh, this year partnership with Suwada. They are a company that is a regular speaker at Cybos. Cybos is like the Ripple Swell event, except it is put on by Swift. So this seems to be their current partner. And if we go now back to NTT data, there was an early 2019 brochure that appeared through this PDF, and it talked about their initiatives, their blockchain initiatives. There were eight in total, two in Japan, two in Spain, one in the US, one in the UK, and two in Italy. The one in the UK was with X Current, and that's what it was called at the time, and it was a proof of concept only. The one I really want to talk about is the one called Spunta, 
that was being done with Corda. By the way, most of the other projects were either on Quorum or Hyperledger or Ethereum. So out of the eight, just one was with Ripple. Okay, so Spunta. Well, in Japan, they're started to have they started to have a lot of articles coming out in late 2019. And this was about the NTT collaboration with the Italian Bankers Association. And one of the biggest stories actually came from CoinPost Japan. And this is when the news release came out that NTT and R3 were just about prepared to launch a project. And this project Spunta would be for all the banks in Italy for their settlements. And thanks to um, Roses on the Moon, we've got this clip from the CEO of R3, David Rudder. And I want you to listen to this. Our strength, and it's getting real this year. Uh, one thing I want to mention is the entire Italian banking system will be on quarter for interbank payments this year. Hundreds of millions of transactions will be transacted on quarter this year. So it is getting real. It's been six years. That so all the banks in Italy will be on quarter. And today, I found a podcast interview that took place on March 22nd, and it is a detailed conversation of how Spunta functions. This is with Silvia Atanasio. She's the head of innovation for the Italian Banking Association. She has actually functioned as a person working in that group for some 17 years. And the beginning of this podcast is interesting. She talks about how their Nostro Vostro or bilateral account has functioned up until going on to Spunta. It was very interesting. So Bank A and Bank B would be on the same ledger and they actually could view the account balance and movement every three years. So in other words, Bank A would have the availability to see the account balance and movement and then it would change over three years later to another bank who would manage it and oversee it. So when they found the distributed ledger technology, they were thrilled and they started this project called Spunta, which is centralized technology for the interbank uh, reconciliation. It's a private permissioned base uh, blockchain using Corda, but there is something that's quite interesting for what is planned for 2020 moving forward and it's called foreign Spunta. I want you to listen to that portion of the interview. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much um, um, for those top tips. And for looking now in our 2020, you know, how are you looking to grow your, your project and DLT in general uh, within the Italian banking industry? For sure, now we are very focused on bringing Spunta into production with the different waves. But uh, we also have some thinking about other possible use cases. Even if we, at the same time, we encourage the banks to de develop their own ones using the infrastructure we build together. The first extension would be what we call the foreign spunta. We'd like, as soon as this virus will, uh, will flow away, uh, we'd like to set up a work group of European banks to design together exactly as we did with the, the Italian banks, the functional requirements necessary to extend Spunta to the Nostra and Vostro account process that involves banks globally. So that is what she sees is setting up that system first going into Europe and providing that Nostro Vostro solution using the Corda. So now that this is on my radar, uh, I will be sure to follow it and I will be sure to report to you any uh, updates that I do find. Okay, everybody, I'm going to jump to some fluff. So today I functioned as a hikyaku. These were the messengers of the Edo period. They were used to pass critical communication between key points geographically. I know that sometimes um, the messages that 
come or that are delivered are not really what you want to hear. But I think it is totally important to really understand what is happening in this space. If I only, only provide messages of the perf in a perfect scenario with Ripple and XRP, I think I'd be doing myself an, an injustice and also everyone who listens to my videos. So please allow me to be one of these hikyaku. And uh, yeah, I'm not so sure I want to be <laughs> running on foot. I want to be one of the hikyakus that were riding horses in that time. So if they had messages that took place over very vast geographical areas, they would use horses. And then they had these uh, change out posts for um, a relay, if you will. So you could get a fresh horse and a fresh rider and the uh, message would continue on over the um, over the country. So yeah, in, you know, Japan is 70% mountainous. So getting across from one area to another uh, in the Edo period was a challenge. And so this is the way that they would move communication. And still today, there's a lot of people, of course, who do cosplay here. This is actually an original lacquered hiyaku box that they would carry sometimes with just a message or sometimes with actually uh, some deliverable piece of merchandise on the inside most interesting and here you can see this is modern day japan and somebody is enjoying this cosplay by taking on the role of a hi hi hikyaku now i just think it's great it just looks really great to see a very modern building with this traditional edo clothing and holding his uh, i don't know the name of this sorry in japanese but this is what the they would use to carry their uh messages in Okay, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.